Good morning, my dear. Today is Sunday, March 14th, the fourth Sunday in Lent. I am Reverend Gretchen Pena, and today's word is energy. Let's take a moment in prayer. Precious Spirit, thank you for this opportunity to come together in prayer. Thank you for the blessings of the refreshing rain we've had this past week. And thank you for all the other blessings that we've experienced, whether or not we've recognized them as such. We ask you to bless our world leaders. May they operate with compassion and wisdom we ask you to bless all those who are afraid, all of those who suffer, all of those who live in poverty. Allow them to recognize your grace and to be filled by it and to grow and to heal and to expand their lives in wondrous ways. And for this, we say thank you. Thank you, God. Amen. Well, I have to admit to you, I have to make a confession. When I looked ahead several weeks ago and saw that today's word was energy, my first thought was, can I get somebody to trade with me? Because energy is a hot topic for me right now. I could use more of it. And, of course, so when I saw that it was the topic, I wanted to run away from it. But what it has prompted me to do is, is do some reading and dig out some books that I, I have. And start looking at the reasons why I may not be experiencing all the energy that I could. As human beings, any living thing has an energy field. And as human beings, our, we have an energy field that extends about as far as our outstretched arms all the way around our body. It's interesting that in Western civilization, we don't have a real term for this energy. In Chinese, they have qi. In um, Hinduism, they have prana. The Hawaiians have mana. Everybody has a name for it except Western civilization. In order to look at energy, we have to only look at it scientifically. But um, as one of the writers I was reading has expressed, Dr. Uh, Carolyn Mace, her name is spelled M-Y-S-S, uh, in her book, Anatomy of the Spirit, she says, biology is biography. So, or, or biography is biology, excuse me. And that means that whatever emotional, usually traumas or wonderful things that we have experienced, they become imprinted in our very cells. And another, um, physician, Dr. Candace Pert, who is a biochemist, has uh, discovered there are chemicals called neuropeptides, and these chemicals convert emotions into matter. So uh, biography really is biology. Um, whatever we experience emotionally becomes encoded in our very cells. And some of it may have happened so long ago that we have no rec recollection. I know that as a child, a strong emotion that I experienced was fear of dogs. I was walking home from school one day when I was in the first grade, and a vicious dog in our neighborhood literally treed me. I had to scamper up a tree, and it barked at me for a very long time, and then it left, but I couldn't tell but that it might have been lurking around a corner so I was afraid to get out of the tree and my 
mother finally sent my grandfather to come find me. And here I was a couple of blocks away from home up in a tree uh, fearing this vicious dog. And for many, many, many years after that, I had a fear of dogs. Somehow or other, um, that fear has gone. I am no longer afraid of dogs. I didn't do anything that I'm aware of to um, get rid of it. It just sort of happened, which is wonderful. But things like that imprint on us and make a difference. In our energy field, we can have positive energy or negative energy. The fear of the dog was negative energy. Um, Positive energy comes from having a proper diet, enough exercise and sleep, and experiencing joy. Whatever makes us joyful adds to our positive energy. Perhaps it's music, perhaps it's being around babies, um, perhaps it's just hearing bird song and looking out and seeing the trees moving. It doesn't need to be any immense huge event, just small things that bring joy into our hearts. This increases our energy. Conversely, if we um, experience negative energy, this happens through fear, like my fear of the dog, and then even years later when there were no dogs around, all I had to do was think about dogs and it would call up that fear. So if we're ruminating on things that frightened us or upset us in the past, this is adding, well, it's not adding, it's depleting our energy. It's causing an energy leak. Uh, another way that we can experience this is by, by being around people that deplete our energy. And that's not to label some people as energy depleters, but because we're all different and uh, we all have different levels of what we want to experience in communication, um, sometimes very, very loud, bouncy, uh, uh, I don't want to say not excitable, but people with a lot of intense energy, being around them can actually deplete the energy of someone who is more sensitive. So it's not, um, it's not that they're labeled bad, it's just it's a bad fit. So how do we, if we have a lack of energy or if we sense that we're losing energy, what do we do about it? Well, we need to engage our intuition, which we all have, and look at those situations that make us feel tired, make us feel drained, and think what it, what it can it be about those situations that are causing this. Um, if it's being with loud, noisy people, if it's being in crowded places, um, if it's ruminating on old fears or anticipating what could go wrong, because of course we've all been cooped up for the past year, so this has had an impact on our energy field as well. And um, so we need to just take a moment to get intuitive, allow our intuition to come forward and listen to it. So often we discount our little flashes of intuition and they're not the Las Vegas neon signs and there's no brass band. They're just little nudges, but we need to be quiet enough in our soul to listen to those nudges. Our scripture for today is um, from Matthew chapter six, verse 22. The eye is the lamp of the body so if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. And I'm kind of looking at this metaphorically as the eye of intuition, the eye that helps us to see where we might be getting off track a bit energetically and help us to course correct before things get really, um, really worse. 
So as we take a moment now to go more deeply within, let's think about how we can engage our intuition to help us be more sensitive to our energy flow. So I invite you to settle yourself comfortably in your chair. If possible, place both your feet on the floor so your body can be centered and aligned and your energy can flow freely. Set aside anything you're holding in your hands or your lap, especially in your consciousness. Set aside those concerns and worries and fears that deplete your energy. And I invite you to take a deep holy breath. And as you exhale, allow this to symbolize your willingness to be present, and to be focused for this Wherever it is, is a safe place. This is a sacred place. And now as we join together in prayer, silently allow the words that you hear me speak to become the words of your heart. Precious Spirit, for those moments when I am feeling energetic, when I am feeling full of joy, when all is right in my world, I remember to thank you. I remember to thank you for all the blessings that I experience, the little ones and the big ones, but particularly the little ones. I will take nothing for granted. I will give thanks wherever I experience anything positive. And when I feel something negative encroaching, I take a breath and I examine what's going on without and within. Am I thinking of old things? Am I in a situation that does not serve me? What is happening and what can I do to set it right? And if there's an action to be taken, I gracefully take it. So having this in mind, I go more deeply within to ponder the power of my intuition right now in the silence. And precious spirit, I thank you for these moments of contemplation, these moments where I look more deeply within and recognize that I am sustained and motivated by divine energy. I claim that energy and I allow it to sustain me, to motivate me as I go about my day. I am humble, I am grateful, and I say thank you. Thank you, God. Amen. 
And that, my dear, is actually our affirmation for today. I am sustained and motivated by divine energy. I am sustained and motivated by divine energy. So take on your day with all the powerful, positive energy that's available to you. And thank you for joining me. Namaste.